There is an aesthetic that accompanies Nicholas Winding Refn's drive. It is filmic fairy tale. Amidst the hard shadows and neon colouring, there is the prominent use of symbols, the most iconic being that of the scorpion on the driver's white satin jacket. Although born out of a practical need to have a light fabric that could be lit up at night, Ryan Gosling pushed for the scorpion for its connection with a fable relating to his character. This is worked into the film, and I think it reveals a lot about its largely silent protagonist. You know the story about the scorpion and the frog? The story is about a scorpion who enlists the help of a frog to ferry him across a river. Fearful of being stung, the scorpion assures the frog by explaining that if it were to sting him, they would both drown. Halfway across the water, the scorpion stings the frog, and when asked why it had done so, it replies by saying that it was in its nature. The significance of this story would seem to be that the driver is the scorpion, that it's in his nature to kill, and as much as he might want to start anew with Irene, he is unable to change. It is his destiny. There are moments in the film in which the driver is shown to be capable of extreme violence, and it's at these points that he is aligned with the scorpion, coming to life on his back as he takes deep breaths, or when he pulls back a hammer as though it were the poison sting of its tail. Somebody call me, no. There are other moments, however, that undermine this idea. There's a hundred thousand streets in this city. You don't need to know the route. The opening lines of the film, which set up the driver as suave and direct, are repeated later, word for word. Anything happens, happens in that five, five minutes, minutes and I'm yours, no matter what. No matter what. Showing that this is practiced. It's an image that he strives to maintain. And it's not always convincing. You're not very good at this, are you? Take, for instance, when he bumps into someone from a job and threatens him. How about this? Shut your mouth. Or I'll kick your teeth down your throat and I'll shut it for you. His rehearsed line is shot down. Nice thing in you, kid. Much like his eventual adversary, Nino, he isn't taken seriously. Yeah, I'm 59 years old, Bernie. They still pinch my cheek like I'm some fucking kid. And though his silence can sometimes be threatening, the driver does seem to be more childlike. He's addressed as kid by his crooked surrogate father, and he's associated with Benicio. They both wear masks. I'm scary. This is significant in that it can be seen as an extension of his jacket, as part of a costume, one that he intends to be scary. He hides it when trying to evade police keeps it on when conspicuously covered in blood. There comes a point in J.G. Ballard's High Rise in which Anthony Royal, the building's architect, gathers the courage to walk down into the mob-run depths of the building. He does so with animal's blood covering his signature white safari jacket. Like the blood stains on his jacket, Royal was proud of these signs of combat. He wore its blood on his chest and hips, the insignia of an executioner's apparel yet to be designed. My interpretation would be that the driver thinks he is the scorpion, that there is no room for an anti-hero. He can't be both a good guy and a criminal, capable of violence. Is he a bad guy? Yeah. How can you tell? Because he, he's a shark. There's no good sharks? No. I mean, just look at him. Does he look like a good guy to you? Thinking of himself as a shark or a scorpion, he acts accordingly and makes it a self-fulfilling prophecy. But in actual fact, he is the frog carrying the scorpion on his back. The job that spirals into chaos is offered on the edge of a body of water. The driver making clear that he drives and nothing else. He is the mode of transportation for the criminals, for the scorpions. And so it is they who will ultimately kill him as in their nature. <laughs> 